Hello everyone, this is Amrit Pal Singh. Welcome to the next video of Apache Spark series. Guys, in this video, I'll be talking about Apache Spark ML. It's a machine learning uh, component of Apache Spark. We generally call it as MLLib. Guys, Apache Spark ML is the machine learning library which is consisting of common learning algorithms and utilities which includes classification, regression, clustering, dimensionality reduction, and underlying optimization primitives. So in this today's video, what I'm gonna uh, gonna do like uh, we are going to train a model to predict the famous Boston housing data set. Currently you can see in front of you, I've already opened up my uh, Apache Spark in the Python. We all know that Apache Spark can be opened up in multiple ways. We are having Spark shell, which we uh, use it in Scala language. We have PY Spark, which we use in, in Python. So today we're gonna use PY Spark. You can see I've already opened up in front of you. In addition to it, behind the scenes, you can see like we are having Boston housing CSV file available. So we are going to train a model to predict this famous Boston housing data set. So what is the uh, prerequisite, right? Like uh, what, what you require to uh, conduct this little practical? First of all, obviously we require Python. Then we require NumPy. We all know NumPy is a famous numeric computation library in Python. So Spark, ML, use it internally for its computations. Then definitely the Spark. So we have a three requirements, Python, NumPy, and Spark. So guys, uh, if you don't have NumPy, we all know that uh, we can all install with PIP space install space NumPy. So the, uh, what we're gonna do, we're gonna solve, uh, we're gonna uh, talk about regression today. Uh, let's start guys, uh, this data set which I was sharing with you, this one, it's uh, small in size with only 506 cases. It contained 14 features. Right, what are the 14 features you can see? We are have CRIM, which is nothing but uh, per capita crime rate by town. Then we have a ZN, means proportion of residential land zone. Then we have INDUS, uh, which stands for proportion of non-retail business. Then we have CHAS, which is Charles River Dummy Variable. Then we have NOx, which is nitric oxide concentration. Then we have RM, which is average number of rooms. Then we have H, uh, which is proportion of owner occupied units built prior to 1940. Then we have DIS, weighted distances. RAD, uh, which is index of accessibility to radial highways. Then we have tax, full, prop full value property tax. Then we have uh, PT ratio, pupil teacher ratio. Then we have B, which is uh, uh, it is defined as a formula. I'll, I'll let you know it's a formula actually, uh, which is thousand. Then we have BK minus 0 0.63, which is BK is a proportion of blacks by town. I'll put all this uh, like features in my description of my video. Then we have LSTAT, which is nothing but a percentage lower status of population than MEDV, which is the median value of owner occupied homes. So guys, what's the objective of this practical? The goal is to use this first 13 features till this LSTAT from CRIM to predict the value of MEDV, this one, all right? So that in a layman words, we can say we're gonna predict the uh, housing price, which is the last column based upon the first 13 columns, all right? So let's start guys, uh, you can see the Spark is already opened. So first of all guys, what we're gonna do? We are going to uh, create the Spark session, all right? So what is Spark session? We all know it's a unified entry point of a Spark application. Although we know that we have a Spark context available, we have a streaming context available, we have Hive context available, which are the entry point to uh, Spark, right? To the Hive, as well as to a streaming functionality. Similarly, we are having Spark session, which is a unified entry point of a Spark application. So guys, uh, every Spark application requires a Spark session. Just to create a Spark session, what are we gonna do? We're gonna write from pyspark.sql space import spark session. S capital, here S capital, all right? So it should create a spark session for you. Done. Afterwards, guys, we're gonna define it. It will first import, then we're gonna create a variable spark, spark session. dot builder dot get or create okay 
so first of all we have imported a uh, important package or library then afterwards we have just created this spark session now guys next point is to uh, load the data after creating a spark session now we're going to load the data data it's available this file uh, i'm away, i'm having in my uh, downloads section so what i'm going to write spark.read.csv so it's a csv file we're going to read it with the read.csv method so here we have to give the complete path it is in my downloads home amrit downloads with the name boston underscore housing dot csv all right then we have header i'll let you know what's this header true and then we have infer schema equal to true so let's see if it's working so guys in this case i have given two uh, optional uh, not optional we can say it's important uh, uh, parameters first is header header means header equal to true means it signals that first line contains the header guys the first line means the column names i should uh, what i'm saying that uh, like the first line should be considered as column remaining will be the rows then we have infer schema infer schema equal to true means like it enables the automatic detection of underlying data schema so whatever like whatever data we are having it should treat in a same way if it's the uh, uh, it's a double value or it's a float value it should be treated in the same way so it's infer schema equal to true let's see if the data has been loaded successfully we have a show keyword available it should uh, print the uh, top 20 rows you can see it means everything is okay and with the help of header equal to true we have we have taken into consideration the first row as a column name all right so uh, till now we have loaded the data successfully so guys one thing i want to say like spark ml algorithms expects the data to be represented in two columns we have a two columns available first is features column next is labels column so what is features features is an is an array of data points of all the features to be used for prediction in this case from crim till lstat these are my features column because it's an array of data points of all the features to be used for prediction because we're going to predict the 14th column based upon based upon these 13 columns all right and labels contain the output label for each data point so this is my label okay so in our examples uh, you can see in this case the features are the columns from 1 to 13 means for crim till lstat and medb column that contains the price is my label so the goal is to predict the label from the features so how we can create that feature array so creating a feature array is very straightforward uh, we have to import the vector assembler class and we have to pass in a list of the feature column names guys this vector assembler require behind the scenes numpy thing right so that's why i've told you that numpy need to be there in your system so let's uh, first of all uh, just create that feature columns so what we're gonna do we are gonna write feature underscore columns equal to data dot columns then minus one what it means guys here we are omitting the final column because we don't want that final column to be part of features column okay so first 13 will be my uh, features column done so guys we have uh, defined my feature columns now we gonna uh, just import the vector assembler class let's do it it is available from pyspark.ml.feature okay then import vector assembler v capital vector assembler a, a capital assembler all right so import vector assembler done it so guys we're gonna i'm not i'm gonna clear the screen so that you can see it in a better way so we have loaded this uh, imported this vector assembler class now next step is to pass in the list of feature column names all right so afterwards we have to define assembler okay equal to vector assembler all right then it has two parameters input calls input calls means input columns it will be my feature column that i defined in the previous step feature underscore 
columns all right then we have output call then we have output call in this case it will be my features it means it will be my the output which will be resulted all right so what i have done in this case output call equal to feature define the name of the output vector that contain all the values all right so here in this case we have uh, defined my input calls which will be my feature columns and the output column it define the name of the output vector that contain all the values okay let's see if it's working oh working now what we're going to do guys now we're going to use the assembler to create that features column how i'm defining it as assembler dot transform okay transform data so what it will be doing it will be adding you will find that new column this column features column will be added to my existence existing uh, data and my existing data is having the actual data what we have loaded plus you will be finding one new column over there with the name features all right so if you print that data underscore 2 you will notice a new column called features that contain all the values combined in the one list let's see if it's there so i'm going to use again show you can see guys in addition to these 14 columns which were there earlier we have also have got one new column got added called features which is nothing but it contain the values combined in one list you can see so we have done it all right so i hope uh, everything is fine till now so i'm going to clear the screen afterwards guys we have a we have a uh, step of training or testing as in any machine learning uh, learning work, workflow we split the data into train and test set right so here we split it into 70% training examples and 30% testing examples so let's do it train test data underscore 2 dot i'm going to use random split for this random split mean meaning is like whatever data you are having it will be splitting randomly into two parts 70 70% and 30% all right 70% training 30% testing so i'm defining it as 0.7 comma 0.3 all right so it will uh, split your data into training and testing so we have done it so guys after till now what we have done we have just uh, split it my data into two parts now we going to train the machine learning algorithm okay so we move uh, to a very important and interesting part now let us train a simple linear regression model on our data so uh, for this linear regression model uh, first of all we have to import the necessary class how we can import it we all know uh, from space py spark dot ml dot regression space import linear regression linear regression guys we all know this linear regression actually falls into the category of classification of machine learning all right so we are importing it here now guys uh, next we'll be defining the algorithm variable we need to specify the name of the features column and the labels column so we are uh, defining this algorithm uh, variable here and using this linear regression which we have imported in the previous step so we have to now uh, specify the name of the features column and labels labels column linear regression as a keyword okay then we have feature call it's a keyword it, it will be my features which is nothing but the combination or the resultant of all the uh, columns data as a list features and what will be my label column i've already told you it will be my mdb which is the last column label call equal to mdb all right done so guys now here comes the time for training now we have to call the fit method to start training our model on a train set for this i'm going to write model equal to algo dot fit and i'm going to pass the train part means 70% part it may take little time guys here i got my prompt back so guys almost we are done 
Now we're gonna evaluate the model performance, all right? So completing the training phase is not enough. We now we have to calculate how good our model is. So guys, uh, I'll be defining this variable, evaluation summary, okay, equal to model dot evaluate. Passing it here, test. Okay, all done. So guys, now using this evaluation summary object, we can now access a vast amount of matrices. The first one is, you can actually, you can uh, uh, get some stats out of it, like what's a uh, mean square error here, what's a mean absolute error here. So what are the statistics you are looking for? You can now access this uh, uh, vast amount of matrices using the evaluation summary object. Let me, evaluation, summary dot mean absolute error so I got this uh, guys we got this output so in this same way you can uh, easily find all the other statistics like uh, root mean square error r2 and many more all right so guys uh, this is this is all about this uh, evaluation evaluating the model performance Moving further guys, the last step uh, for which, uh, we were, which we were waiting for, we have to now predict the values. So to, to predict the values for the unlabeled data, we have to call model.transform function while passing our data frame, all right? So last step is coming up guys, uh, predictions equal to model.transform, okay, this function, and I'm gonna pass test. Okay, so prediction guys, it will be a data frame which contain the original column, feature column and predictions column generated by the model. Let's see what we get. Let's see now. Okay, so we have, uh, we have executed this statement very successfully here guys. Now let's see predictions. Here we go, the last step is coming up, dot select. So what we're gonna select? Predictions dot columns, 13 onwards. That's why I'm writing 13 column. Okay, dot show, dot show. So here we go, if we should get the result. You can see guys, uh, this was my MEDV column, the original column, which was containing the values 24, 32.7, 30.1, 23.1 and all. In, in between we have a features column, because we got now total 15 columns, right? So 13, 14, 15 got printed here. So 13 onwards, sorry. We have MEDV column. Okay, which is my 14th column, then features column, plus we also got another data frame, another uh, like uh, got my another column available here prediction. So in this case, guys, you can see 24 is been predicted like 30, 32.7 got predicted like 30.83 in this way. So in this way, we can relate the uh, results here. So you may find some deviation because we can't achieve 100% accuracy. But still, uh, we have uh, in some areas we have done really well. You can see like it is 32.7. It is now predict we have predicted like 30.83. So here we got 20.6. We have predicted like 21.93. So guys, this is all about this uh, machine learning stuff. I hope guys you must have understood uh, what we have done in this today's video. All right. So what we have done just we just have trained a model to predict this famous Boston housing data set. So what I'll be doing in my description of this video, I'll be giving the link of this data set. Plus uh, I'll be sharing this whole code over there. In addition, uh, whatever the uh, feature, uh, whatever the like uh, fields we are having of this column, its representation, its meaning, it will be there in the des description box as well. Thank you guys. I'll see you next video.